Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY home decor crafts for you today. So hope you enjoy what I've got going on. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some DIY farmhouse home decor crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I picked up this cutting board at Hobby Lobby. It was around $6.99 on sale. And what I wanna do is see if this is going to work. I want to try and sand the top half lighter, but I suspect what I'm going to do later is probably going to darken it back up, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and take the rope out. I'm going to save it because I'll use it again later, and you can use any cutting board for this, of course. So here you can see how I sanded the top half. It does look a little bit lighter, um, but yeah, what I do later does kind of darken it. So I'm drawing a line about, oh, three and a quarter, three and a half inches up, and I'm going to tape it front and back because I want to keep the top half wood color and then I want to do the bottom half with Debbie's Design Diary chalk paint here little black dress and I'll just paint a couple of coats now originally when I did this um, I sanded the bottom half you know to make it all kind of rustic um, and then I'm like I don't like it so I had to go back in and repaint it but you know you might want to do a little bit of sanding I do a tiny bit but I had done too much sanding so um, I like it better how it turns out in the end with just really a nice kind of solid black with just a tiny bit of distressing around the edges. So get this all finished painted up. And then here's the lovely reveal as we pull the tape off. We always like that part, huh? Perfect. Now I'm going to add some tape just at the top a little bit again because we all know we have those problems when we do go to do some sanding with black paint. It just kind of smears above in the areas where you don't want it to. So that black paint just kind of protect that wood a little bit. Although this is the chalk paint. So um, and Debbie's Design Diary, really nice. I mean, I because a little bit did smear kind of under the tape. Just some water on like a Q-tip or something will just kind of clean it right off. But it was just kind of save myself, you know, from too much uh, mess at the top. So here's what it looks like. Just slight distress. And I love when you sand this uh, little black dress chalk paint too. It does get that nice chalky appearance. So usually what I would do, I am going to finish this with a matte finish a sealer over the top now normally on chalk paint i get a lot of questions on this i don't usually seal a chalk painted product if it's not going to get handled much and i don't usually seal it if i've got enough time for it to cure on its own chalk paint cures at least this debbie's design diary in about 28 days but i have a craft show coming up which is in about a week and people will be touching this so i am going to go ahead and seal it first but if i had a month you know made it a month ago and just stored it for the craft show i wouldn't seal it and again unless something is really like you're going to handle a lot i don't worry about sealing it all right, so now I've just got one of these little wood hearts here. They come in a set of four from craftingwithkimber.com. I'll leave the link down below. You guys know been with me. I've been using these a lot through like the Easter, spring, all that kind of stuff. So I painted two coats here with this rustic red uh, paint by Dixie Bell Chalk Paint. And I'm just coming in and just sanding it up a little bit, giving it a little bit of a distressed look. This board is really easy, but I love how it turns out. All the projects today are very simple to do, I think, but and they look simple in design, but I think they're really pretty. So what I've got here is some vinyl I cut out. Yes, I'll have a free printable for you, a PDF. If you do a PDF, you could come in with some uh, paint pens or Sharpie markers, um, but I would do like a fine tip, you know, and carbon paper and trace it. Or, you know, if you want to take the PNG and clean out all around the background, the insides, the letters, you can cut your own vinyl. I'll also list the fonts down below too, in case you just kind of want to type it out yourself and design it how you like it, okay? And I wanted this to just not go in the middle as usual. I wanted it to just kind of come over to the side a little bit, make room for the heart, and just kind of give it just a slight little design element touch, make it look a little bit different, right? I love how this turns out. And then as you can see, obviously, I did black vinyl on top, so that it would match the black paint on the bottom and of course white vinyl on the bottom so that it would shine you know over that black paint so this is my idea of a messy bow i don't do a lot of messy bows i think when other people do them they look great whenever i try them they look stupid so just a couple pieces of crochet trim and some uh, twine from dollar tree and i just kind of used a little thin piece of white twine to just tie it securely in the center just gluing that down with beacon fabri glue and just a couple three pieces of greenery here 
one long piece, a couple short pieces, just so the long piece can kind of come down into the cutting board a little bit, take up a little bit of that dead space up above the quote, right? And then things always look good in three, so three pieces of greenery, of course. And then I'm going to come in and just glue a simple twine bow using thicker twine right in the center of all of that. I'm going to go ahead and tie that rope handle back on because I like how it looked before and it's nice and thick. And I'm going to glue the little red heart onto the left of the quote and that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm using one of these frames. I'll have the link for you down below. And at the end of my video, I talked in my last video about how I found some canvas framed art at a thrift store and I took all the canvas off and it had these beautiful frames on it. Um, so I'm using one of the shorter boards here and I'm using a piece of leftover from my work surface down below. It's just a, you know, you can use a piece of foam board or cardboard. We're gonna cover it up with some scrapbook paper anyway. So I know it's not pretty, but no worries. So I cut it to kind of fit the back a little bit. If you don't have any kind of, you know, canvas framing, I mean, you can go to Dollar Tree and get a canvas, you know, very cheap there. Um, you could Hobby Lobby, Michaels, that kind of thing. What I'm doing now is just marking where the frame meets that board so that I can cut a piece of scrapbook paper here um, to fit just inside of that frame. And I want to cut it about probably a quarter inch shorter all the way around. Okay, and so this is what it would look like. So you can see the pencil mark around it. I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary little black dress here. And I'm just going to paint just, you know, using a wide brush, just, uh, just like this, just right around where I penciled, marked that area off because the rest is going to be covered up. Now, I didn't go edge to edge with the paper just to give it a little something, you know, decorative and kind of fun. Um, so I wanted to see a little bit of that painted edge around the scrapbook paper. I'm going to go ahead and paint around the edges of this as well because on the back I will cover it up with some more scrapbook paper to make it look finished off but you'll see the edges. So I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary White Swan chalk paint here and I'm just going to paint two coats on this frame and then a little bit you know around the perimeter of course on the back side so that will be all finished off as I was discussing a minute ago. And Instead of doing my normal, you know, I usually tell you off camera, I'm going to take my electric sander and distress it. I'm going to do some wet distressing on this today. We'll do that here um, in just a minute. I've got one of these hearts. These come from Dollar Tree at Valentine. They had several different designs. And I'm just going to use that Dixie Belle uh, Rustic Red. Paint a couple of co uh, coats on here. Right, while that's drying, I'm taking that scrapbook paper I cut to fit the inside and I'm just sewing around it. And I'm using some white thread so that it kind of brings in the white frame around the edges. And then of course you see it a little bit, right? I just like this look. If you don't, you know, like it, you don't have to do it. Easy peasy, easy decision. You could take like a white Sharpie marker if you want, make little dash lines around it. Would do if you're not a sewer this is what it looks like and then I'm going to take the open end of my scissor blades as I usually do and just kind of scrape along the edges adding that texture I say it all the time but it really does work it honestly makes that paper pop up off the back of the board so again another free printable for you I'll have the link in my description box to my blog with all the printables today it'll be a pdf and a png as I usually try and do unless the png is you know you could type it out quicker yourself if you have an electronic cutting machine because I always list the fonts for you. You could use carbon paper and white paint pens to do this. Or if you pick a lighter color of um, cardstock, you can run it through your printer first, print out, depending on your size of your project, print out the quote onto your cardstock first. You're not going to be able to print white, unfortunately. It'll print out in black. Doesn't matter, right? It'll print out nicely onto some lighter color cardstock or some really pretty uh, scrapbook paper, and then it's ready to go if you didn't want to trace it with carbon paper and that kind of thing. 
All right, and I'm going to just come in. That's all on my uh, cardstock there. I'm just going to distress up my little heart again, like I did my last project. That's why I say again, like I did my last project. I'm taking some of that uh, white paint I did on the frame, mix it with water, and using my fan brush, I'm just adding some splatters onto my heart and then onto my paper just a little bit. Now I'm going to come in. We're going to work on the wet distress. I like wet distressing because it kind of erases it versus putting those heavy sanded marks onto your wood. So you can either spray onto some cloth and rub it on, and it does take a little bit of effort, but uh, Debbie's Design Diary paint is pretty darn easy for doing this method with. I find Dixie Bell is a little bit harder to do. Um, this chalk paint's a little bit softer and does wet distress very beautifully and then you can even spray the water directly on your product if you want and then you know white you know wipe it white it off white wipe it off <laughs> um here's what it looks like can you kind of just see it just has a nice melted look versus this the sanded scraped look all right so now i'm just on the back of my frame i'm just marking where this thing is gonna sit so i know where to kind of glue here and I'm just going to use some Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and just some finish nails at the end, a couple of nails on each side. Get this on here. It'll set up just some little finish nails around the back. And then now I've got a piece of uh, cardstock to cover that whole thing. And then the back side will look all nice and finished off. We don't want that part to show, right? <laughs> there we go. And just use my brayer to rub it on really nicely. Now we're going to come back to the front side. And here's how all my wet distressing looks. See, it just, just looks melted and erased. I kind of like it. It's a nice softer look for distressing. And if you don't have sandpaper or sander, easy way to do it. We're going to go ahead and glue down our quote in the center and see you just see a tiny edge of that paint around the outside there. Use my brayer to kind of smooth this on and then we're going to go ahead and glue our heart right in the center underneath the word bakery and then that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project from Dollar Tree, I'm going to use these 10 inch chunky slat boards. I'm just going to use um, three of these. They come in a set of four, craftingwithkimber.com. Again, link will be down below for you. They're nice little thick hearts. And then I'm going to use just one of these wood planks out of this package of six from Dollar Tree. And then one of these houses as well from Dollar Tree. And I've already got this as a leftover piece uh, from a chunky slat board from another project. And it's just about five and three quarter inches long. Whatever length you want works. So I'm just using my heat tool here and a one of those little palette knife palette tools that you can use for like Cricut machine or whatever um, from Dollar Tree and I'm just as I heat it I slide that tool just right underneath there and it'll help kind of pop this off because it's all just glued on and I want to reuse this part anyway and then I'm going to pop off and keep this heart and so I pop a little bit with the spatula and then a little bit underneath there we go it'll kind of pop that thing off and then I can heat set you know going along as I need to and just rip this fabric right off. And then I'm going to just come in, even though most of it's getting covered up, I'm just going to kind of sand it off anyway, um, you know, so any kind of scrapbook or paper doesn't look bumpy over, you know, the glue and stuff that's left on there. So this is the papers I'm going to be using. Just picked some nice, you know, stripes and solids to go with this. So on the little square board there, I'm just going to mark where I want my paper to fit. Again, I'm going to cut it a little bit short all the way around, about a quarter inch short all the way around, because you all can say it with me, right? We're going to paint this stuff, and why do we paint it if we can't see it? <laughs> Good job. 
and I'm coming in with the heart. I'm going to do three hearts like I showed earlier on this. So I'm tracing two on one uh, design paper and one on another paper. These papers are double sided. So no, that's not the side I'm using. And then I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch in and I'm going to redraw the perimeter, the pattern perimeter of the heart. And then that's what I'm going to cut out. So again, that we can see around the edges of the heart. And again, my voice sounds better this video, but still got the sickness with me. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. The paper a little bit shorter, so we'll continue coming in and cutting the rest of the hearts out. Yes, this sickness will not leave. I start to feel human one day, and then the next day I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> but I'm still going. I'm still going. All right, get this last one cut out here. And now the paper I'm using, um, it's a little bit short. So I when I have paper that's a little bit short and I need to kind of tape it together. I try to find patterns that when you tape them together, you can't see the seam. So I'm just making sure I line these stripes. It usually works really good with like stripes or polka dots. Line that up really well, flip it over, of course, and then I'm going to trace the house onto the back. And then I will cut this out again about a quarter inch short all the way around. Don't have to so much worry about the roof because that part will get covered back up. So, um, don't really need to cut that part short. But if you didn't want to use the piece up top. <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of show you this method. All right, this is what it looks like. And you will, I know you see that line a little bit at the bottom, but you won't when I put the square piece on. I'm going to use a little black dress again, Debbie's Design Diary, Waverly Wax mixed with some water. And I'm going to stain like the chunky wood and the rooftop. I originally paint the hearts in black, but then I decide later I don't like that. It doesn't work right because I need to bring a little bit more of that stain look in. So off camera, I end up paint or sanding the hearts and then um, staining them. So sand to get all the black off and then staining them. Okay, coming in around that square board, just painting around the edges there a little bit because, again, we'll just cover that center up with some paper. Now you can see my hearts to the left are painted, but that'll come off later, and the next time you see them, they'll be stained. Painting around the house, just around the perimeter on the front, and then I'll paint the sides and back fully. So it's, again, as you all know, I like to have everything finished off on the back side. We're going to come in with my sewing machine again. Come in and sew around all my papers. Those of you who might be new to my channel, I love to sew on my papers. Uh, my stitch length is on a four. Uh, I use all polyester thread because my machine likes that, but cotton thread will work fine. Um, my tension set on for and I just sew on it like it's fabric so don't be afraid to do that if you're a beginner try it out get an El Cheapy sewing machine this was a couple years ago um, after a Black Friday sale but it was only like $49 and I use it just for my crafts to add you know that fun subtle texture on it I know there's handheld sewing machines too that uh, a couple of my you know you wonderful subs have told me you got and it works very well so that might be a nice option and certainly cheaper to try um, if you want to try to add that sewing to your papers. I'm coming in, like I've done my last project, and just scraping along the edges, add that little texture on all my pieces of paper here. And then we're going to start gluing some things down. Here's what my sanding looks like. I distressed everything off camera. Okay, come in and glue that main sheet down. And then we're going to glue our little rooftop on here. All right, here's my heart. See now they're all stained in distress. I left the back side black because you'll see the back a little bit of the way I layer these on. And we'll go ahead and glue our papers onto the hearts. I really like this one. It was hard not to keep it. <laughs> but it's going in for sale. Perfect, because even though I love the colors, like the aqua colors and stuff, I tend to love to scrapbook with them a lot. I don't have a lot of aqua colors in my craft room. I do a little bit in my organizational stuff, but my craft room's full anyway. I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue here. I glued that board onto the front of our house, and I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue here to glue onto the main board at the bottom. And I'm gluing it toward the back. So you can see here if I turn it around, that way I have some room there. So this is the free printable I'll have for you on this one. Um, it will have the PDF and PNG, like I always say, but those of you electronic cutting machines, this one might be quicker if you just type it out yourself than trying to clean everything out. Okay. And again, I'll have the fonts listed down below. 
I wish I could get SVGs to work, but I do everything from my iPad and I can't seem to get SVGs to work. I don't know what it is. So PNGs it is. I'm going to come in, grab some leftover paint that I used on the second project, water it down a little bit, and use my fan brush to add some splatters I did on the this main piece here and on the hearts. I'll go ahead and glue this paper down here. I'm going to take one heart and I'm going to glue it to the side here of our main quote. And I didn't want a heart just like sticking out there like, okay... So I want to tie it in with some other hearts. So I'm bringing some hearts down to the bottom, laying one down flat on the bottom piece, and then one kind of upward point of contact is where you want to glue. So look to see where your pieces are going to touch contact and add your glue in those places. And the fabric tack, I have no problems. It's not going to fall off. Glue those down. And now I've got three hearts, so it looks intentional and not a single heart floating off to the side somewhere. And that makes this project complete. So I hope you like all the projects that I came up with today. Please give my video a thumbs up so we can help my channel to grow, grow, grow. And leave me a comment down below and let me know which project you want to make right now. If you wandered in here for the first time, you're just checking things out. I hope you like what you saw today. And if you did and you're just digging it, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. God wants to heal and hold your heart with everything that you are going through. Jesus cares. Jesus values you. He created you. He loves you. He knows exactly what you need to make it through and what your heart needs to feel whole again. He understands your wants and desires, but he knows exactly what you need. His will is to carry you through whatever you are facing. His word says that he cares for you more than the birds in the air. So why wouldn't he give you a path to travel? Why wouldn't he provide a way out? He works things out in his timing. Even though that that sometimes can be hard for us to comprehend, God knows what to do and when. He is working on your behalf, always for you, always for your heart. You need to allow your heart to feel his love, his mercy, and his grace. Such a simple thought, really, but sometimes so hard to allow yourself to be vulnerable before the presence of our Lord. But the vulnerability is what allows God's will to come in and take care of you. Don't try to do it in your own strength. You can't control the outcome, but God can, and He will. He lives in you and abides in you, so why not allow Him to help you and lead you down the path to victory? Allow your heart to be healed your hope to fly into the heavens and soar on eagles' wings toward the love of the Almighty God. Trust me, it's a better option. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.